everyone. Welcome to another American TESO Present Free Friday Webinars. I'm your hostess, Shelly Sanchez Terrell. And uh, you might hear my, my co-partner here, uh, my 16-month-year-old Savannah in the background. Sometimes she likes to add her little input. Sometimes she pops in the video and says hi. Uh, we're here every Friday thanks to AmericanTESOL.com. You can get certifications in teaching young learners, uh, also for teaching business English, teaching also um, advanced TESOL, and then ESL um, TESOL as well. We offer these online or also on face-to-face -face, um, all over the country, and these uh, certifications are recognized all over the world if you want to teach abroad. Uh, we have, we even list job postings in so many different countries. So you can find the information on the right side. That's where we leave all the links. And then you can find this uh, recording and also some links on our YouTube channel. Um, it's youtube.com slash AT, uh, user slash ATSOL. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, we're going to talk about today superhero activities and apps for young learners. Because superheroes is a really cool theme, and you can use that even in, I think even closing uh, some of your classes, I know some of you might be going on break soon. This is a great way for the end of the semester, end of the school year, to really motivate and engage your students. I know a lot of them get very restless. My students get restless as well. And the great thing is if you do have a theme with superheroes, that is um, you know, really diverse. Um, students of all ages really identify with superheroes. Superheroes tend to be cross-cultural. There are superheroes in lots of different countries. Um, superhero movies are watched all over the world, and it's something that's very familiar. So uh, that's one thing that's really great as well, because students across the countries, uh, you know, are really, really... Um, they, they really do enjoy superheroes. The other part that I think is especially important, I mentioned that in a recent uh, blog post that I did as well, is right now it's really important that students start to identify and have conversations about, uh, about what it means to be a hero, especially when they see a lot of celebrities, um, also uh, sports stars, they see those on Twitter, they, they're more accessible. And some of what happens, even leadership, very famous leaders, how they conduct themselves on social media, and that's across the board, not just pinpointing anyone. Um, you know, it, it, it's really hard for students nowadays to really identify what is heroic behavior, what it is to be brave. So I think studying superheroes and literature they begin to learn that. They begin to learn what it means to be brave, what it means that, you know, not just be, uh, because you're a leader or in a high position or famous or a celebrity that makes you a hero. So I, I think that's really important as well. One of the easiest ways to really learn about superheroes is to read about them. And there are so many free resources and ways that you can access free materials, especially if you have technology. But even if you don't have technology, uh, if you you can talk to a lot of um, English publishers, if you're an English language teacher, they usually have superhero books. Or you can, I'm going to show you how you can even uh, find some comics that are really inexpensive, you know, a dollar, dollar fifty or something. You can get a whole bunch of different sets, and that could be much cheaper than whatever novel um, or book that you're teaching. So there's lots of ways to um, access superheroes. When they read about superheroes, there's a lot of different subjects and topics that they can also learn. It's not just you know one topic, but it's cross um, curriculum. So it's many different types of topics. You can for um, older learners in in um, a little bit. You know um, if you have fourth, fifth grade, or third. You know ten, eleven, twelve. They can even start learning. You know, they start learning about history, science, creative writing, politics, self-esteem, geography, citizenship, literacy, and even for very, very young learners, uh, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, um, this is a way to 
or really help them with their English language skills and they can learn some uh, as well. And I'm going to show you those resources, but when you go to ShellyTerrell.com slash superhero, you can find resources for all age groups, um, whether it be teenagers, adolescents, and some some topics that are really hard because um, there are superhero activities that teach students about physics. They teach them about, about um, biology, chemistry. I mean, so it, even text, uh, I mean, uh, those science topics that can be really hard to grasp, there are definitely uh, superhero uh, content, lesson plans, videos, free, free materials for that. But we're going to focus on young learners because we only have about 30 minutes. So oh, I wanted to focus on young learners for now. One of the most popular, famous superhero books for young learners um, is actually uh, Captain Underpants. And Dave Pilkey, I've used with my young learners. I'm currently teaching in Texas, but I've taught um, in over 20 countries, uh, teachers and learners. And when I was working with young learners in Germany, I was teaching four to 10 year olds. Well, my class is varied, but um, I, I, I did a lot of teaching the four to 10 year olds and two year olds as well. But um, we, we love Dave Pilkey books. We had a bunch of Dave Pilkey books that we would just um, read and they loved it. So um, kids um, now get to see um, a different types of superheroes from Dave Pilkey, which was uh, the dog man and cat kid. So you have for even very young learners, the adventures of super diaper baby. And of course, the famous one for even 9, 10, 11, 12 year olds will enjoy um, the adventures of Captain Underpants. M my students really also enjoy um, You Can Do Anything Daddy by Michael Rex, um, Superhero School and Superhero Max. There's Plenty of other books for young learners there, but um, those are the ones I think are really fun for now. Planet Pilkey, um, because it's so popular and when you have a book that's a bestseller, the publishing company gives a lot of free resources. Um, so that's a tip. If you do teach a particular book your students love, you should really go and, and search to see what kind of apps or what kind of websites are associated. So there's a free iOS and Android app for learners for Planet Pilkey, and you can learn about all of the different types of characters. They have handouts, they have games. I mean, they have just so many amazing um, things for kids. I think they can even create an avatar as well. So they have interactive activities. And those activities are high literacy activities while students are completing these. They're also learning English, and they're writing, reading, and writing as well. One of the best resources to find physical comics, like books that are not online, um, as well is kidscomics.com. So what Kids Comics does is you can put in your zip code, and it's going to give you a lot of different types of uh, materials out there. They're, they'll even list some free comics as well. Um, but one of the really great uh, things, I, they don't just have superheroes, they have a whole bunch of different types of comics. But a lot of times you can find superheroes in comics. And so one of the ones I found on kids comics that I really like, because it's not, uh, a lot of times these aren't popularly made unless you can see, you know, um, if you subscribe or but one of the ones that I found on the website that I thought was really great was Metaphase. And what this is, is a, a superhero um, who has Down syndrome. And so one of the great things is that there's a lot of comics out there that are more diverse, that really teach, makes kids, everyday kids, even those um, with learning needs, um, into superheroes. And so not only is it great for learning reading um, is a great reading material, it's great for children, but it also helps them to be better citizens, to also learn more if there's um, a student in the class or in the school or many students that have are struggling, then it lets them be able to understand them and also relate to them better and see um, as a hero. So Metaphase is one of those, it's a superhero that's a little boy and he goes on adventures with his superhero dad, and he has Down syndrome. Those that really focus on English language learning skills,
skills and really have great vocabulary. Learn English Kids has a bunch of those. Uh, what I really like, and I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit, is Style a Hero and show you what kind of vocabulary you learn. But there's also superhero games. There are superhero stories. There are some superhero um, reading materials like cards that are good for 10, 9, I mean 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But there are also on Learn English Kids, you'll find for very young learners, uh, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, there are some great animated um, with songs, with games. They also have handouts that you can print as well. It's free. To, you can access all this material, but if you want to download the handouts, like the ones here, you can kind of see them on the bottom, then you would have to register for free. Students can register for free, too. You'll see a lot of comments. They have tried to make it a great social site. Um, and make it great for um, for learners as well. So that way kids can have a safe place to be social as well. So I think that's really good. There, um, this is what it looks like uh, for older learners. So you can kind of see they've diversified the content over here. They have um, where it's animated, it reads aloud, it also has the captions, there's handouts. And then for a little bit older, you have these, these fat files of superheroes. And a fun kind of a follow activity is to have students create their own fat files. This is really easy to create. They can do this either on a piece of paper if you don't have a lot of technology. They can do this with you know software such as, um, they can use Google Docs. They can also do this on Google Draw. They can do this on um, with web tools, with free web tools as well. They can do this kind of activity using pick the chart or they can, you know, there's so many ways that they can, um, you, you you know, create these fact files as a follow-up activity after they've read the facts. There's a great way to teach grammar with superheroes, which is Grammar Man. This is by Brian Boyd, an ESL teacher in Thailand, and so he creates these comics. There's even video comics, and so this is a great way to get students to learn about things such as, um, you know, uncountable uh, no um, nouns, using um, fractions, tenses, he does it all. So it's really exciting and students will be able to learn about grammar in the meantime. One of the ways that you can really get students to interact and learn vocabulary, which I think is really important. Right now I'm writing a course, um, a graduate course that I'll be teaching. And part of that course uh, for teaching ESL is uh, tr trying to find activities for integrating technology and then also learning vocabulary, learning grammar, listening, reading, writing, and speaking skills, the four skills. And so creating a superhero um, is one way that you can integrate tech and really get students to do that. So what do they learn? Well, by creating a superhero avatar, they're able to learn about the parts of the body. They're able to learn about clothing. And all of this was part of uh, themes that I had to go, um, you know, these were themes I had to cover when I was teaching learners of all ages, I, especially when you teach beginners. Uh, children, definitely, but even beginner high school, These, this is some of the activities they would do because in high school they had to learn about uh, the parts of the body, that was one theme. And so um, also they get to learn about um, different types like capes. They get to learn blue hair. You can tie in colors. You can tie in, you know, seasons, all kinds of different things. And after they've created, so you here it says shoes, headgear, and then they're able to. So this is a great way because it's a way that they'll be able to um, if you want something that's a little bit more in depth, that has even more vocabulary, where it has a story surrounding it, then Scratch has a free superhero maker. This is for a little bit older learners, um, maybe you know, uh, 12, 11, um, 13, 14, even teenagers. But this one has it tied to a story. So students fill in their superhero. And it goes through a story. They ask, what's the city named that your hero is in? And they ask all these questions and then immerse it in this uh, very textual game. So you're, you're the superhero they create and um, Scratch actually has a whole narrative that goes with it. So I think that's really exciting as well. And that adds more reading content if you want more 
reading associated. DC Comics, with this one you would have to provide a vocabulary list because they don't have, um, they, on DC Comics they don't list the vocabulary, which is kind of sad, but they do have uh, female and male superheroes, which I think is really important. I checked, there are a lot of other free ways to create superheroes, but some of them don't have where girls can create a superhero. They only have male ones. So I'm listing only the sites that they thought were really safe and also allowed male and female superheroes because I think that's very important as well. Marvel Comics does have where you can create a superhero. You can see the one I created. They have these cool little uh, symbols that go with it. When they're finished, uh, when you finish creating the superhero, depending on any of the ones that you choose, whichever you think is more appropriate or would be fun for your student, a lot of these creating the avatars your students don't have to register for. So that's really cool because I'm always looking for activities where my students don't have to sign up, <laughs> where they can just get on the computer, they can go to the website and then they're able to create it and then what we do is make sure that they download the JPEG file. So usually at the end, and that's so important to remind your students, um, and, or else they'll have to start again, is to make sure that they either take a screenshot or download the JPEG file because uh, they, or PNG. They'll let you download it as an image. It doesn't save it, so you can't go back. Um, so that's important to note as well because if they don't register, then it doesn't really allow them to go back. Once they do um, download their superhero, then they can create a story. So that in, um, integrates writing. And you can have them use that list of vocabulary. You, sh you know, I'll sometimes do that. We'll have phrases or vocabulary or even a tense, a uh, grammar tense, um, that, you know, I'll ask them to have within their stories and that can be a way that you teach vocabulary or grammar or that you um, teach phrases as well and they can tell the superhero um, they can either be the superhero of their story but sometimes students want the avatar that they just created in this story so there are different ways to create superhero stories they could um, go to makebelieves.comics.com Make Believe's comics just got a new look and it makes it so much more user friendly. Um, students don't have to register. This is what my students use. We just created comics with uh, Make Believe's and they came out really well. Um, the students, they put their name if they want, um, the author name, the name of the comic, and then they just click on the bottom and then whatever pane they're on, it'll be. So if they click on this pane and they click on the character and they just scroll through and they can have different emotions, they can have different backgrounds, different captions, so they can type in dialogue for their superhero. They can go up to nine frames. What my students do is after they finish the nine frames, then they'll just go back and they'll create another nine frames. They'll just keep using Make Believe's comics. And they don't have to, once again, they don't have to sign up or register, but they just need to make sure that they're able to um, click and save the PDF or JPEG so that way they have it, okay? Um, with Make Believe's comics, they do have a little button that says go back and edit. So if they do mess up, they can always go back and edit. I use it for that too, because once my students uh, make a grammar error, then I have them uh, corrected. And so they're able to go back. The great thing about Make Believe's comics is they have some of these printables. You can print them out. And uh, so you don't necessarily have to have technology or a bunch of computers or anything like that. What you can do is you can have either this printed out or, and what it is, it's a hero and it's a writing prompt. So this is a great way to get um, writing integrated as well. Students are able to see this prompt and then that can be part of their journal or part of the blog post. You can, you can save some trees and you can just put it up in an LCD projector if you want or an overhead projector and that's a great way to get them to write as well. Book Creator um, has also um, ways that you can create a comic and then also has some superhero Hello. images as well. Students, the great thing about, I'm sorry, honey. Um, <laughs> so, um, book Creator, the great thing about Book Creator is that you're able to also 
um, with you can upload that avatar. So that avatar that they had just made, um, they could actually incorporate it in a real story that has video and audio so they can integrate all four skills using the Book Creator app. And that is very exciting as well. Book Creator has come up with this new feature. So if you work with Chromebooks or if you use the Google Chrome browser, which is free, you can use it on any computer. I use Google Chrome, the browser. I love Chrome browser. That's what my students use. Um, and because and what you can do now is you just uh, and click on this extension and it'll actually read the students own stories to them from Book Creator aloud. So this is a great way to really um, encourage listening skills. They can do this at home as well. If they use Chrome, their parents can hear this read aloud by Google. So that's really, really cool. And uh, I think that's a really great feature. Um, and it's also accessible. So if you do work with students that are uh, blind or deaf um, um, or have other learning needs, Book Creator has worked with a lot of teachers um, that have help them create uh, really great uh, features to help with that. Superhero comic book. I don't know why this is not a more popular app. It's free. It is by one of my favorite um, creators of apps, Doug Duck Moose. And they make Chatter Picks, which is one of my favorite apps for kids. And uh, one of the great things about this is that um, they have this superhero comic book maker and this really integrates speaking skills um, and listening skills because not only do you do the the writing um, that you create your comic and everything, but the other part is that you're also able to record your voice. One thing to note is once you finish a scene, it doesn't have where you really uh, save it. It just automatically saves it. It updates your book. So that that's one thing I should note about this because I was very confused by that, and then I saw it on my on my uh, iOS device, and it was there. It's a free app. It's only on iOS, but I think it's really great. Um, students love to record their voice, and that's really a great way to do. Um, uh, it's really great to have them do that with a superhero. Uh, to practice reading and writing. I often find that my students will, if they don't get it right, they'll record their voice again and again until it sounds right to them. PC Kids also has a template um, where you can create a comic. They also have comic starters. So if kids, sometimes it's, it's not so easy for students to come up with ideas and write. So comic starters are a really great way to motivate them within a 45-minute class time period. You have so many limits that they're able to get that story out within that time. They can invent a superhero to solve an everyday problem that's at the school. So here's some ideas. Um, you know, they, I think that's really important. It's really important that students are able to um, tie their learning to real-world learning. So what I have them do is brainstorm um, a list of different types of um, uh, issues at the school. So super, you know, students sometimes often come up with different issues, such as they'll come up with uh, recycling. You know, um, there's pollution, or they might um, there's not enough trees, or they'll come up with um, things like others. It's hard to get to school on time, or it's too early, or or, you know, making the cafeteria food better or bullying. I mean, so they do come up with issues around the school and then um, they get into groups and then they can, or even pairs, and they can um, go more recess time, <laughs> exactly. And so they can invent a superhero to solve the problems there. With very young learners, I'll sometimes give them different types of, this is a great makerspace activity. If they go, if you have a makerspace in your, uh, or you have recycled materials, um, sometimes I do that. Then uh, what I'll do is one of the uh, projects or missions that they have is to invent new superhero gear. So they can, it's a craft project, but then they have to, after they create the gear, they have to come up with, um, something where they list, you know, they come up with a poster where they list what this new superhero gear does, you know, with this stick. And it's um, um, creativity and imagination. 
So um, it doesn't matter what they um, invented, that's, and then they can just put features. It doesn't have to be real features. It can be, oh, this makes them invisible. Oh, this. And so that's a great way to get them to start writing uh, simple sentences. You know, um, with this stick, they can, and then they can, you know, keep uh, practicing that tense. This is um, also if you have, uh, for example, if they're able to have, um, um, if you have something like a 3D printer, this could be something that they do where they sketch out and blueprint, you know, an idea for um, a new superhero gear or, um, you know, um, it can, and remember, it doesn't even have to be like a stick or a weapon. It could be a glove. It could be shoes. And so it's good to remind students things like that as well. Um, but they can always, um, with your 3D printer, that's a good 3D printing activity because they're able to design it and print it if you happen to have one. They can invent an app for a superhero. My students actually don't go and create apps. Um, on my YouTube channel, um, if you go to youtube.com slash user slash, I think it's Shell Terrell, you'll find some that teenagers did when I was working in Slovenia and Croatia. And um, they invented an app. What they do is uh, we actually have like um, where they put the prototype of what it does. Um, they make a little video trailer. So they work in groups of four. They decide what the app does um, for the superhero. And um, what we do is we like have sort of like a Shark Tank panel and they decide, you know, which are the most useful apps for heroes. I kind of have a superhero story that goes with it. I say the XYZ company is here and they're looking for the next app that does, um, you know, for superheroes. Our superheroes want to enter the modern age, Superman, Spider-Man, um, Wonder Woman, and they want the next app. So invent the app and tell us what it does. Tell us, you know, um, and then we, we go from there. Um, superhero show and tell. This is for very, very, very young learners. I've used it with um, five-year-olds, four-year-olds, six-year-olds. Um, and this is to encourage more playtime. Uh, Peggy was saying um, that there's, uh, Peggy George was saying about more recess. And so these are ways that you can have play within the classroom. What I do is um, I pair students up and they get to play for five minutes. And I just give them um, a topic for their play or a way to have that play. And this is a great way to have kids have emergent language. They can uh, learn. This is something they do after they learn a phrase. So um, the phrase that we've taught is, I'm a superhero, I can, and then they finish that. We do that as an activity. And then the follow-up activity is they get into pairs. Um, they're given uh, lots of different toys, and um, they stand by the toys. And then um, they get to demonstrate the action you know, with the toy. Um, uh, well, this one, for this particular one, this is what we start with. They have superhero show and tell, they have a toy, and they say what it can do. Um, it can fly, it, you know, I'm invisible. And they have to do an action with their hand as well. And so the next, um, when we're in a circle, the next student will say, um, you know, talk about the superhero of the previous kid and say, oh, her superhero can, my superhero can do this. And so it's a way, great way to memorize all of the different superheroes. And then we, we can follow them up with the five minute um, play activities. Students are in pairs. And then um, I'll say something like, okay, um, before we're going to pretend uh, for the next five minutes, um, your superhero has to rescue each other. So you can give them a scenario. Um, and this is also a really great way. Students, you know, experience some really all over the world. They have some, um, they are witness to a lot of things these days, uh, floods, um, fires. I know here we had a really big fire, I mean, flood in Houston. And so this is a really great way to give students hope as well. Um, and, and um, this can be a great way to get them um, to, to talk about things. But they, they're with each other and they help each other. Um, they help each other's superheroes. And then after five minutes, the other person has to help the other one. And I give them another scenario. OK, you have to rescue this from there. And so they can also switch partners after five minutes. You can have them go find another partner, work with another superhero. 
and so that can be uh, activity. Um, superhero day is always fun. Students are able to dress in either superhero gear and they can make that. I mean, some kids are very poor, so it could be that they just wear a cape. Some students get really into it, want to do the whole entire getup. Some students um, will, you know, they can dress as any superhero they want and then they let us know the superhero and every type of activity that day is themed with superheroes. So we can um, have superhero music playing, we can play superhero games, um, we can also have that activity where they teach us a superpower, their superpower, um, and so there's so much that you can do that day. One of the really great activities that I really love, and you can do this on a superhero day or any day, are these brain breaks by pinkoatmail.com. She has these cards. She does have them on pay teachers, um, you know, teachers pay teachers. You could always make your own, but they're so awesome. She has a video that goes with this. And um, what it shows is uh, their brain break. So when you see students getting antsy, um, they don't want to stay in their chairs, they just need a break, then we can say, okay, we're going to take a superhero break. What we're going to do is now we're going to do our superhero leaps. Let's do super leaps. And then really what they're doing is jumping jacks for t uh, 20 times. And then after that, they get back to the work. So I really love these ideas. I, I do think that they are really great for classroom management and they're great for the brain. And it's just a simple idea that you can use at any time within the lesson. So I really like, and because you say a superhero does it, it really, there's been research. And when I was researching this, there was actually some parents that said they would create superhero um, um, kinds of stories and narratives to get their children to clean up the room, to take medicine. <laughs> so, and in, um, I read that on Psychology Today as well, that students and children in general tend to do things if you, um, if you create this narrative of a superhero. And these are things that are good for them. It's, it's not things that, you know, are bad for them. There are superhero STEM resources, and this might be a, for a little bit older of an audience, but um, like teenagers would really like this as well. But this is Bill Nine explaining superhero, um, real tough science concepts, but he does it with emoji. So it's really, really great. I love this um, particular from leftbraincraftbrain.com. These are superhero STEM challenges, and they're actually quite easy for students. Let me make this a little bit bigger um, so you can see this. You can create these yourself. She also has them super on Teachers Pay Teachers, but this is easy. Time a 50-yard dash race to see who runs the fastest. Record your results. Great way to learn math. Um, and these are superhero-themed challenges. Um, another mission card, Grow Kryptonite Crystals that teaches them about science. It's a really easy science experiment. I've done these kind of science experiments with children, 10, um, nine, eight years old, and it's a simple card. So it's really easy for um, students to access that as well. Let's see, let's get back to the other size here. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna wrap up. So um, what do, um, there's some more superhero science uh, math activities you can teach them. Um, and there's lots of sites, you'll find them on shellytarot.com slash superhero. Um, and so these are just the experiments that I was showing you. Some last minute things, Boggles World, which is one of the best ESL um, sites there is, or English language, uh, English learner sites, ELs. Um, and you can find so many um, cards, templates, flashcards that you can print out, and they're all free. So I love Boggles World. It's a great resource. They have so many superhero themes. Uh, my students, this is where we learned um, a lot. I actually uh, love Ginky English, uh, Ginky English. And so what we do is we play. So we do learn. Um, it's a curriculum for, for young learners. It's hard to find them. But he he has a lot of free resources online, and he um, also has this where I think it's wonderful. I can jump, I can run, I can hide. It's a great way to learn I can statements. It's a great way to learn verbs, and they team this up with action. So 
Um, it's a great song as well. He has so many fun songs that kids love. There are so many ideas uh, involving superheroes. I've added tons, and you can find this on my Pearl Trees. And you can also find this if you scroll to the bottom at uh, ShellyTarrell.com slash superhero. So thank you so much for joining me. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording so you can have that at uh, Mary.